The following program is brought to you as a community service of Time Warner Cable. The views and opinions expressed on this program by the hosts and guests do not necessarily represent the views of Time Warner Cable. Greetings and welcome to The Last Hour. Every week, The Last Hour brings you news of Israel, the Jewish people, and how God uses them as his own prophetic time clock, which tells us where we stand in the timetable of human events. We call our show The Last Hour because the Bible, God's Word, tells us this is the very last generation that will close out this decisive phase of human history. Through the prophet Isaiah, God guarantees the truth of his prophecies, saying, I am God and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning. Truly I have spoken, I have planned it, and surely I will do it. And when God says that he will do something, well, you better believe that he'll do it. Today we're blessed to have as our guest another member of a Jewish family who came to believe in the Messiah as her redeemer in a wonderful series of events. Now to introduce today's special guest is the host of our show, David Chagall. Shalom, David. Shalom, Steve. God bless you. A good friend and former co-host of our program, Steve Solomon, told me about a special lady in his church, Calvary Community Church in Westlake Village, California. He described her as a, a shining light who ushered people to their seats. And that reminded me of the prophet Daniel, who foretold that in the last days, Righteous men and women would shine like lights in a world darkened by unbelief and despair. So without further ado, let's meet that special lady named Ellie Bracken and find out why she shined. Shalom, Ellie. Hi. And welcome to The Last Hour. Thank you. Tell me, Ellie, uh, how did a nice Jewish girl like you <laughs> come to faith? What was your family like? Were they believers or what? No. Were they? <clears throat> um, my parents, actually, my dad changed his name from Solomon to Solon because of, uh, you know, I guess anti-Semitism at the time. So I was raised Jewish and definitely not to believe in Jesus. Where was that? Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. And uh, the high school I went to was predominantly Jewish. And that, you know, that's it. That's and my way nice of thinking. Ju Jewish nice Mabel? Jewish girl. And I met my husband uh, after I had graduated high school and he was not Jewish. And my father wouldn't even come in the house when he realized I was seeing him because he was not Jewish. But uh, I guess strong-willed or God had his plan, but we, he eventually let us get married. <clears throat> and we were married by a rabbi and promised to raise our children Jewish. And Interesting. Except seven years later, something happened to me. And uh, during the time we were married, I met a rabbi, his name was Abe Schneider, and he came knocking at our door. He was um, actually a missionary at that time. And he said, I'd like to talk to you kids. So we figured, yeah, we'll give the old guy some time. And uh, he said, I just want to ask you, if the world's to blow up, where are you going, heaven or hell? It was easy for me. I'm Jew. I never murdered anybody. I'm going to heaven. Sure. And my husband, of course, being raised uh, in the church, he said he was going to heaven because he believed on the name of Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So I said, you know, I really don't know much about the Bible. I allowed this man to come back into my home and I prayed. And he gave me my first Bible and I said, if Jesus is the Messiah, the Holy One of God, the promised one of Israel, then I want a sign. And it took seven years for that sign. But there was, and as I look back, I can see how God was just wooing and pulling me in with different people in our life. And uh, one of my clients invited us to church. And well, let, I, let me go back. Okay. Were you, uh, during those seven years, were you reading the Bible? Mm, no, I kicked him out of my house, actually. He was annoying, and I did pray, but I kicked him out of my house. Kept the Bible, 
very respectful. I mean, if it was on the, you know, I would dust it and you wouldn't want to <laughs> drop it or you'd kiss it. There was something respectful about it, but no, I didn't read it. <laughs> didn't read it. Did, didn't did, read it. Had you gone to Hebrew school as a kid? No, no, I did not. Okay. You and know, we celebrated the Jewish holidays and, you know, got together with family. And um, so anyway, here we are invited to this church by my client. And she said, you need more God in your life. And I said, I need something. And the scripture actually was that first scripture that ever spoke to me from the Bible was Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give mm -hmm. you rest. And I said, boy, I need rest. I can't do it alone. So we went to this church, and I don't know what happened, but something, I was standing there, and I said, okay, Jesus, if you're the Messiah, the Holy One of God, the promised one of Israel, I invite you into my heart now. And if you're not, I want nothing to do with you. And I was born again. You said that in church? I said this quietly to myself. As you were sitting in the pew. We, I don't remember if we were sitting, standing, singing. I don't remember what it was, but something prompted me to say that. To ask Jesus to prove, him. you say a sign. The Bible says that the, uh, the Jews look for a sign. Well, I was waiting for a sign, and all I know is that once I opened my heart and surrendered and asked him in, and I know that Jesus, if you read the Bible, he will not force him, himself That's right. into your life. That's right. You know, it has to be an invitation, and the other scripture is, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and anyone who opens the door, I will come in and sup with him. But you have to invite him in. And as soon as you did that, you felt oh, re rest? It was, a, it was a washing from the tip of my toes all the way up. I mean, tears just were flowing oh, down, and just a feeling of just overwhelming acceptance and love and that I was not alone. Oh. And the miracle of it is that the same thing was happening to my husband. Really? Yeah. Uh, so, even though he had been a lifelong churchgoer, uh, I, I describe him as a buried again, born again, buried again Christian. Okay, so he, just, so he, he was renewed at right. that, the same time you were. Right. Look how God works. I know. And my friend who was with me, she knew what was happening. She's just petting my back, you know, as I'm just sobbing. And it wasn't a sob, it was just like a cleanse. So after that, it was like um, the Holy Spirit just drew us in, and there's a scripture that man does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And it was like that hunger that we wanted to know the Word of God. And it's like we gave up TV for almost a year or so, and all we did was just delve in and started reading the Bible. And you know what? It started making sense. How do you like that? Yeah, it yeah. was like opened up to us. There's a, an old saying that in, in secular things, you have to uh, b um, b uh, learn before you can believe. But in spiritual things, you have to believe before you can learn. Yep. And that's... You're, uh, it just opened was up. Was Dwayne the same way? Oh, both of us. Uh, both of us. The so, hunger was there. And how did you get... Just by reading the, the uh, scriptures? Or? Well, we started reading. I, in fact, I started reading... It was probably a children's, children's Bible, you know? So it was easy to understand. But, you know, when you start reading scripture and you start recognizing Isaiah and you see that 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 was written thousands of years before Jesus was ever here, and they describe a crucifixion. And from my studies, crucifixion wasn't even a way of death yet. The Romans came up with that. Mm -hmm. So here that was written by Isaiah, that he would die on a, uh, you know, pinned up on a tree. And, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, well, the train of thought was very good, that, you, that the scriptures... Oh, oh you asked about that. We yeah. started going to Bible studies. At the church? At, yes. What church was that? Um, I, we accepted Jesus at Bel Air Presbyterian. And because I was a Jew, I did not want to be sprinkled. Presbyterians only sprinkle. That's, that's so true. the pastor uh, baptized me in his swimming pool. Oh, that's good. So he, he was a, I, just, he I was, wanted to be dunked. He, he was uh, uh, an, enough of a, a Christian, more than a Presbyterian, to be able to baptize right. you the way you wanted to be baptized. Right, right. Well, that, that was good because the scriptures say, uh, well, number one, believe and be baptized. So you have to, you can't be eight days old okay. as the Presbyterians right. baptized the infants. And, be baptized. and then, uh, and it says there that uh, all the people that were baptized from John the baptizer on were baptized in, pool, in water. Right. And not sprinkled. So right. That, that came with the Catholic Church. Business. Right. 
So, so, so there you're growing in a, a Bible study. Well, here I have to, so once I've come to accept Jesus, and I remember this man that came to our door and I kicked him out of our house. I said, don't call me, I'll call you when I'm ready to read the Bible. Abe Schneider. Abe Schneider. God bless him. And he had a radio show called The Hebrew Hour. So um, anyway, we had called him to tell him that I was the little girl that, you know, he came to our door and, you know, I know he prayed for us and he kept saying, hallelujah, praise the Lord, <laughs> when I told him I accepted Jesus. So he told my husband um, that he has this radio show. So he started listening to it and we hear that he's in the hospital. And we had invited him to come over that weekend because he wanted to hear how it finally came that I would come to know my Messiah. And uh, anyway, we spoke to him and got to talk to him and he said he was going home. And he did, he went home to be with the Lord. I never saw him again. But uh, I'm sure he was welcomed. Oh. welcomed in his real home uh, with a well done, good and faithful servant. Absolutely. Uh, th th did you hear, hear his testimony, how he came to? Uh... Um, you know, actually, I don't, I don't remember it. I do know that he was a rabbi and when he came to recognize Jesus that uh, the temple he was in was not thrilled with that and they kind of excommunicated him. Mm. And uh, anyway. Yeah, well, that's, I, I have an experience with an Orthodox rabbi that went through the same process. Mm -hmm. and they uh, excommunicated him. I was uh, blessed enough to sit at his feet on Shabbat and learn scriptures from his perspective as a, a believing Jewish rabbi Christian. So the, the best of, of all worlds. Uh, uh, what do you do at the uh, Calvary community? Obviously you were called to serve over there. Oh yeah, my husband and I, um, well our daughter moved to Idaho and took all of the grandkids away. So we just needed to fill ourselves with a baby fix. So we've been volunteering for years and we take care of uh, toddlers. Oh, okay. So we do that the second and fourth Sunday and then we do ushering. So we greet everybody and make them feel very welcome. And we've been doing that for, I don't know, about 12 years. That's what Steve Solomon noted. And that's, yeah, and I wear a little Jewish star ever since I came to accept Jesus. I wear a little Jewish star, but I had it made with a teeny cross in it. So there's a lot of people that say, oh, I love your star. But then I say, well, I have a little cross. And that gives me a chance to tell them that the Messiah is Jesus. You're a completed Jew. I'm a completed Jew. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm not looking anymore. No. no but the, so the, when the Lord asked uh, Peter, uh, will, you, you know, will you go elsewhere after I leave? And Peter said, where would I go? <laughs> and I found the, the king of the universe, the mm -hmm. creator, mm -hmm. the Messiah. I, this is it. I, I got no place else to go. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's and that's kind of the way I I get calls from uh, Chabad in Brooklyn, uh -huh. where the people are they're angry at me for trying to convert them, and I tell them I can't convert anybody. I'm still Jewish. <coughs> in fact, I'm more Jewish than I was before because, you know, my love is is in the Bible, and it's just such a miracle when you read the Old Testament. I mean. Uh, you know, people say, oh, well, you're not a Jew anymore, but I am a Jew. When people talk to me, they, there's something about, if you've been born and raised Jewish, you, it kind of shows, I guess. But I just find that I think a lot of the modern Jews right now, it's, it's more of family and community, and they don't seem to really believe in the Bible or God, and that's so sad. Yeah, that's, it is. It, you say you're Jewish, and I'm Jewish. Right. Steve is Jewish by adoption. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus, Yeshua, right. is king of the Jews, right. and he left a Jew, and he'll come back as a Jew. Right. So, uh, being Jewish is not a is not a, a closed door to believe in the Messiah. Right. <clears throat> it's just being completed. You're just not looking. the The miracle is, which is that it is a reality. I mean, when I look back, I can see all of the signs how God was wooing me into His kingdom. You know, certain people that would plant a, a message. You know. And of course, Abe, and then this client that invited us to church. And, and I just kind of see like I was just being drawn in until I finally said, I, I invite you into my heart. Were you watching Christian television? Um, yes, I was. I started, yes. I, I was drawn to it. I just wanted to hear more and more. Who did you watch? Um, actually, we were watching, is it uh, ba Baker? I did enjoy oh, their yes. show. The, uh, I did. It's too uh, bad about. People fall, yeah, and we do. know that, and it really does hurt. Uh, it, I think it hurts the ministry, but we are all human, and 
we are all in a process of becoming more like Jesus. Amen. And that's sanctification. That's exa exactly right. And uh, people think that because you you became blessed by receiving the Messiah in your heart, which is what happens, uh, that that all the troubles are over. Right. Uh, were they? All are over? they all, all the trouble? No, but I've learned to. Uh, uh, not get hysterical over them. I mean, the Bible tells me, be not anxious for anything, but by everything, by prayer and petition. And he's not saying, don't try not to worry. It's a command. Don't be anxious. God has a plan for us. And we just have to kind of sit back and be obviously aware of those things. There are certain steps that you'll take. But I don't, I, I believe we've been through a lot and I don't think I fall apart. Praise God. Well, what, what are the, what's the step you take when you get burdened with uh, the, the enemy coming at you with uh, troubles? Um, I, I find that um, being accountable to other Christians are going to help, that, you know, you can share those things um, and pray, you know, in the name of Jesus. This is not going to destroy me, and you're not getting a foothold in my life. Amen. And thanking the Lord for where we are and what we have. And uh, my husband and I, we've had plenty and we've had less and we've learned to be content in those places. Wherever we are, it seems like we're able to make the best of what we yeah, have. You have the most important thing. The Lord says, you cast your, uh, your anxieties on me because uh -huh. I care for you. Mm -hmm. And that's a, I always remember that scripture. Whenever troubles arise, I said, Lord, it's not me, it's yours. They're your problems. Mm -hmm. And it really does. It eases the burden. Right. So to know that he, right. he will take care of all the problems that arise in your life. Well, I think one of the greatest things that my husband and I uh, have talked about is that both of our kids are believers. So that is, that's really Did great. They, uh, so how, how old were they when you came to faith? <sighs> you know, um, Stacy. you know, I don't know. I've been a Christian for, I think we figured it's 39 years. 39 years? Yeah, it's 39 years. Uh, what, do you remember the year and the, the time that you said, okay, Lord, if you were real? Well, let's see, I'm... I'm 66, so if you back up 39, I don't know. It's amazing. Good I've God. never been with years. You know, our just my life. You know, we just go on. I don't. God has given you beautiful grace Thank and beauty, you. Thank and uh, just like Sarah, Abraham's wife, when she was uh, 70 or 80 years old, they coveted she went her. The, 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 the <laughs> Egypt, they were all lusting after her. She was right. a beautiful lady, and that's right. true of you, Ellie. And Thank you. You're a, you're a great. Uh, Tribute. Thank you. And blessing. I'm the, I know the God, especially telling people, you know, you're going to be on television all over the place. Thank you. And uh, the people will watch and see how you are. And God willing, that it'll be a, an opportunity for them to come to the same challenge that, if they're Jewish, to challenge the Lord. I mean, that's a typical Jewish uh, reaction. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, if you are real, if the scriptures really say the truth about you, then take away, I had an addiction. Take away this addiction, and I've been trying to get rid of it for years, and I will believe that you have the power and, and the authority to do so. And you know, Ellie, as soon as I made that challenge, it wasn't even that prayer, it was a, just a challenge, mm -hmm. an in-your-face challenge, something lifted off my chest, just like you, and I felt totally renewed and light as a feather, and I knew who had done that. Mm. That, was, that was the end of my search. I, wow. I had found what I was looking for. So it's, it's a wonderful thing that you do. You, you say you teach little kids? Well, they're a little too young to teach. We're, we, <laughs> we just keep them occupied and love them and pick them up. My husband's a, a magnet for kids. My husband <coughs> does it with me, too. Oh, okay. I mean, he'll have two on, <coughs> one la you know, on his lap. And, uh, yeah, we enjoy it. Oh, do, do you have, I guess they're too young for memory. Oh, versus, half the time they don't remember us. We see them go on to the next class and we'll wave to them. They don't know who we are. Oh, this, uh, this, <laughs> but they're not traumatized with us. <laughs> this is a nursery. It's a nursery. Yeah, oh. they're toddlers. They're, they're just learning to say more. Uh, just teaching. <laughs> <laughs> <You want> cookies. <laughs> just teaching Jesus. That's it. That's, they're just that's loved. It. The whole idea of a rebellious heart, you can see it in kids. Oh, absolutely. The second the word they learn is no or give me you got it more no, no. <laughs> I know mama first and second is not papa but it's no <laughs> <laughs> that that's, comes with our it's it, uh, it's true you know people don't realize that we have a sin nature and if you look at a little child you have to teach that child to be good 
because their natural thing is selfishness and wanting more and give me and self-centeredness. So that, we have to, they have to learn the, the better behavior, which is being kind. Amen. Yeah. You know, you know uh, Adam and Eve sinned. That is, they disobeyed. That right. was the sin right. of disobedience. And they were cursed right. by being cut off from God. Right. And God provided a, a, a remedy to that curse, a cure in his son right. who went and shed blood, which out, without the shedding of blood is no remission of sins. Right. And Jesus shed that blood forever, one time. And all you have to do is call on him. And that shed blood becomes your cleansing, your forgiveness of sins. That was another scripture when I was reading that, that it realized that it didn't matter who you were. When he was, uh, during Pharaoh, when they said to put the sign of the blood over the doors, that wasn't only for the Jews, because that was a lot of Pharaoh's uh, men who did it, because they believed that the God that we were talking about had more power. So it was by being obedient, not because you were Jewish. Right, I'm in, the right. Time, I'm, no, I'm in the right time frame, right? Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. The, the, uh, the the blood was. Uh, I, I, I that was the so. Scripture. The first child, the firstborn, was not going to be killed. Right. This is right. Right. The, the the angel of death. Right. Would pass over. Well, that's where the right. That's where Passover, Pesach. Exactly. Comes from. But if you put it over the door and you put it on either side, that's really the sign of the cross. That's I never thought of that. No, it's I exactly always put right. it on the side, and on the sign, it's the side of the cross. Uh, I think all of these things have been put there. And, and I also think that during uh, Passover, when they would wrap the matzah, and they'd have three matzahs, you remember that little oh, game? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Well, the three matzahs, I think, is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And the middle one is Jesus. And that's broken. Yeah, and it's broken for us. That's right. It's, uh, you know, you get deeper into Scripture, and you're always coming on surprises, mm -hmm. which only solidify your faith. Right. Because the Bible was, was written by Jews for, uh, for Jews first. Right. As it says in Romans 1.16, for I, uh, you, this gospel should be preached as a sign uh, for forgiveness of sins to, to, uh, to whoever believes and to the Jew first mm -hmm. and secondly to the Greek. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, the... They, uh, they talked about many churches uh, preach to the Gentile first and forget about the Jews. So we want to do our best to have remind churches, anybody that's watching this show, to remind their pastor that the Jew has to be brought into this. Mm -hmm. Give back the favor. The Jews gave the favor of the scriptures and the Messiah, and now they, the Gentiles have to give it back. Mm -hmm. Ali, would you look in that camera over there? <coughs> where, where are we looking? The, right over there. Right here? <coughs> yeah. Excuse okay. Me. And tell people out there how they can come to the same peace that you found. Uh, well, it, it's what I had said <coughs> before is that it's not going to hurt, but if you're searching, if you're curious, Jesus will not come into your heart unless you, he's invited. So if the question is, if Jesus is the Messiah, the Holy One of God, the Promised One of Israel, and that's who we're looking for. Ask Him into your heart. And if not, He will not come in. So you have nothing to lose. And I think that all I can say is that it is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. That's a, a favorite hymn of the faith. It is well with my soul. Mm -hmm. And you know who wrote that? No. It was a guy. Oh, was it the man that um, wrote the song about his wife, didn't they die? Yes, his family. Yes, his family died on a died cruise on or the, something? On, on a, uh, a ship, an ocean liner. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and when he came, he took that same cruise. When he came to the spot where the ship went down, he, he went on deck and words to his song came uh, when, when uh, troubles like the sea billows roll. Uh -huh. <clears throat> that the, that you, you say that is well with my soul. Mm -hmm. It is well with my soul. It is. Thank God it is well with my soul. Thank you. That goes for all of us. Steve, uh, do you have any I, comments about what we've been talking about? Well, I think it's, it's a real blessing because uh, uh, particularly when uh, Jewish people come to a completed faith in the Lord and Savior, I was curious as to whether any of your other family members have uh, 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 been uh, no. saved yet. No. 
Yeah, I know that's a, a, always an ongoing issue for, for mm -hmm. Jewish people who come to, to faith. I mean, eventually my father came to uh, love my, my husband, but, you know, he, he, he gave us a wedding, and we were married by a rabbi, and obviously after the Lord came, you know, he, the reality came, I had to tell my father that I believed in Jesus, and he didn't re reject us. He, he actually, he thought we were kind of cute as a couple. His daughter goes to <laughs> church and we had kids. And I was married very young. I got married at 18. So, oh so we were blessed. We're going to be married 48 years this year. And uh, Hallelujah. Yeah, really. So uh, we, are, we definitely were supposed to come together. Yeah. And God has work to do through you yeah. and, and Wayne. Uh, I guess, and I have a brother who's very much into positive thinking and, you know, motivation, and he just, uh, he quotes a lot of scripture, but he doesn't really Well, we'll live continue it. to we'll pray, pray for, pray your, for family. your family. Okay. Steve, do we have something to give the folks today? Yes, we do, David. Uh, I'm sure that just like us, our viewers are thankful for the opportunity to meet Ellie Bracken and to learn about her involvement in bringing people to Yeshua. And we thank you, our viewers, for answering the call to watch our program today. The fact that you turned on this show is no accident. It's what's called a divine appointment, as Ellie was talking about, an appointment for a purpose. Today, God wants you to do something you may never have done before, to surrender your heart to his son, Yeshua, and believe that he is your own Messiah. Now, the Bible says that God is commanding all men everywhere to repent because he is coming again. And he says that he will judge the world through the man who he has appointed heir, having furnished proof by raising him from the dead. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, is Lord, that he shed his blood and died for your sins, and that he rose again to assure us of these things, then you too will be saved. Today we'd like to offer our viewers a special publication that reflects our discussion. This booklet explains God's own requirements for any of us to receive the gift of eternal life. Just ask for Born Again when you call, write, or email us at the locations appearing on the ending credits of this program. Now, if you haven't got a Bible, and if you live in the continental United States, we'll be glad to send you absolutely free of charge a full Bible in English, modern English. And if you read Hebrew, well, we'll be happy to send you a full Hebrew-English Bible like this one. <clears throat> or if you speak Russian or Spanish, we can provide you with that as well, a full Bible in Hebrew and Russian, Hebrew and Spanish, or whatever else your native language may happen to be. So until next time, be sure to watch the last hour for prophecies, news of Israel and the Jewish people, and more wonderful guests like Ellie Bracken as we move ever closer to the time of the end. Shalom, and may God bless you. As they say in our synagogue in the other day, amen.